Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at a program called bpytop. It is a Python port of an older program called bashtop. The code is available on GitHub and I've installed it on my main system using the snap package. There's a few different options available on the installation here, so I've got yeah, it's packaged for a few different Linuxes, but yeah, it went for the snap package because of course I can, being Ubuntu and all. You do have to give it some permissions here in the snap package, but uh, weirdly it's uh, missing one of the dependencies or more like a slightly older version of a dependency there so quite why that's not been updated yet I don't know but anyway it seems to work. So open it in the terminal got a nice fancy intro screen there very nice and this is it so it is a glorified system monitor it's recognized my CPU Ryzen 7 1800X got 16 cores on here very nice and some features I didn't even know my CPU had was this much of a throttling. So it's running at 2.1 gigahertz at the moment, uh, despite the fact it can uh, go up to 3.7. Actually, I think it's 3.3 on all cores and 3.7 on a, a smaller number of cores. So interesting to see it has that, and the temperature is working. <laughs> I think that's like the first version of Ubuntu I've had where it's now working properly. So. You know, it's not been working for so long that I'd actually forgotten this feature would even exist. So that was uh, interesting to see. So on the left hand side we have the memory and disk utilization, we have the network utilization, which uh, I'm not doing very much at the minute, so I could do something about that to uh, make the network do something. I was thinking that maybe I run a 4k video and we see it in action, but, uh, but the trouble is 4k videos don't really uh, do much to my CPU. Yeah, that's no good, is it? Oh, I've got a bit for the network utilization though, so uh, it's not all wasted. So the different views here. So by default, it's ordered by a number of threads. If we press left and right on the keyboard, then we see a different ordering. That's by process ID in reverse. And then we have memory utilization. I'm not sure what CPU lazy is meant to be. Uh, CPU responsive, yeah, that's current utilization. Uh, that's the PID order, uh, program name arguments in the programs and threads, yeah, background. So, oh, that's user. Um, let's go to CPU responsive. And another view we have is the tree view. You can actually see what programs are spawning other programs. So that's a nice view, different. You've got the per core or a percentage utilization. So what can I really use to demonstrate this? I've got VirtualBox open here and that's not doing much. And a while back I did a test of how many VirtualBox operating systems I could have open. And I opened something like 16 and I just got bored of waiting in the end. But something I can do is sound convert. Sound converter does one sound conversion per CPU core. So with uh, two albums in the list here, we should see a bit of action. And sure enough, here yeah, we do sound converter ramping up towards 100% CPU utilization. Um, made all the cores go red. Is it bumping up the speed? Nope, because it's over already and we don't get to see that. But we did see the temperature increase. You can see the graph change there of how the CPU utilization has uh, increased. So yeah, that's um, that that was the graphs work in there. Another feature we have is the ability to terminate, kill, or interrupt a program. So let's try that out with Kate. So if I open that up here, ignore the fact we can't find that uh, network address. I'm not sure why it can't. So if I go to filter and I type in Kate, I can identify the program here. So can I select that? I should be able to select it with the up and down keys, but I'm not sure what some of these keyboard shortcuts are yet, but I'm making use of the mouse and keyboard. So we get a bit more detailed information about the process and I can terminate, kill it or interrupt it. So let's go for terminating it. There you are, it's gone. Yeah, so I've got the features we would expect out of a system monitor. Let's look a bit further. We have different themings for it. I will mention a couple of these are going to be very bright. Uh, yeah, that's one of them. Uh, we've got the ability to use the terminal background or the theme background. See, on this one, I would want the theme background because I have a dark color by default. Grayscale, <laughs> if you want black and white, except the logo is in color. Ah, that's all right, let them off there. 
a few different options here and I do believe you can add more themes of your own or customize your own theme. Yeah, it does feel very nice and uh, retro there with some of those themes. I'll just go back to the default. There's mini mode here, so I'll disable the net mem boxes and, the, and lowers the height of the CPU box. Got the update time, the process sorting, all the various different options there on the process sorting, uh, whether you want to display certain graphs. Show the swap. Well, I don't have a swap disk in Ubuntu. And show the disk. And changing the graph sizes on the network usage. I left it all as defaults. And the last one there is about the log level warning. You want to output in the error.log file. There's a list of keyboard shortcuts, so we're not necessarily dependent on having a mouse. Good if you're stuck in terminal, and I suppose yeah, you've got the option of using that over SSH. One thing I forgot to mention about was resizing the screen. So yeah, if you resize the terminal window, it does resize the display. And there is a limit to what it can run at. So I think if you set it too low, yeah, you get a warning that it yeah, must be a certain number of rows and columns in size. So that was a look at BPI Top. I have to say I'm certainly intrigued in it as a system monitor. You get a bit more information out of it compared to the GUI system monitor. Although the graphs in the GUI system monitor are a bit nicer though, but yeah. And it's certainly got a lot more information than the likes of Top and HTOP. On oh, being terminal based, you've also got the ability to use it over SSH or where you don't have to use a mouse because it is not essential to use the mouse within BPI Top. I have to say I certainly like it and I'll be keeping it on my main system. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.